Do you remember when Netscape was your default browser? And you sent email like crazy using Hotmail. Google had just arrived and was still in beta, and you were probably running Windows 98 with that new, colorful, and beautiful iMac that eventually would end up saving Apple from bankruptcy. Dial-up internet speeds were at an all-time high, and it went even faster if you packed your stuff using WinSIP. We communicated using ICQ or IRC or maybe a colorful cell phone with a black and white screen. Elon Musk lost most of his hair writing too much code for PayPal. Bill Clinton did not have sex with this woman, and Bill Gates almost became a prison bitch for giving away Internet Explorer for free everywhere. This is 1998 for you guys. So in this episode we will try to recreate my 1998 PC rig, my computer that I had back in the 90s. Starting off with this power supply. Now the ATX standard is still valid and this is an ATX chassis. So you could probably take this power supply and put it in your chassis that you bought yesterday or today and it would still fit just fine. This chassis came from a company called Network and Network was the largest distributor of computers in um, Scandinavia. I'm from Sweden, so Scandinavia is Sweden, Denmark, Norway, Finland, Iceland combined. I actually worked there for a short period of time building computers like this back in 1997, I think. This is the back plate, at least it's called so in Swedish, bakplot. It's to prevent the material to enter the back of the computer that can short circuit the motherboard. This here is the Pentium 2 CPU. And I think it looks really cool. It looks clean and kind of futuristic, like some kind of spaceship thing. On the PCB inside there is the CPU of course and the cache memory. When I hold it here in my hand, I think this is actually the coolest CPU that Intel ever made. The packaging, at least. My favorite, this is my favorite one. And it snaps in place just like that. Easy PC, and you lock it up by these two dudes here on the sides. And you connect the CPU fan to the motherboard. And of course, you should never um, lift the motherboard holding the CPU like this. Of course, I always did that and nothing bad ever happened to me at least. I replaced the little coin cell battery on the left side because eventually it will lose its charge and you will lose the BIOS settings. And I have four RAM modules, 64 megabyte each. And that's more than enough for us to install all the cool applications that we will ever need. And it's more than I had in my rig actually, because RAM was too expensive. I think I had 64 megabyte maybe, or 128. And they still fit after all these years. They haven't uh, gained weight or lost weight. Perfect. Good times. Do you see this little blue thing here on the bottom of the motherboard, in the middle, in the center? This is a dip switch module and the position of the switches tells the motherboard what kind of CPU is installed. So you need to consult the manual to uh, find out what positions to use for each CPU. So it's time to lift the motherboard by the CPU again and place it in the chassis. The first thing I would like to do is uh, to try to find out how to install the cables that uh, run from the front. You can see them to the right here. Uh, this is the speaker, you have the HDD LED, the hard drive LED, you have the power LED, you have the reset button, and you have the power button, and so on. And you need to find the right place to put them on the motherboard and uh, you need to rotate them in the correct position so that the LED will light up 
so the current passes in the correct direction. Again, consult your motherboard and uh, put on your glasses because it's, it's a hard time. And uh, let's position the motherboard again and um, we are going to put the screws in place. So what's important here is that you use a screwdriver with a good magnetic uh, tip. Not like mine because my real screwdriver is on the other side of the house and I'm too lazy to go get it so I will just face the humility and disgrace because I'm too lazy. But the most important thing except that is to position the motherboard in a way so there is no strain in any kind of direction when you put in a screw. And it's time to put the graphics card in place. This is an AGP graphics card. I will link all the specifications for the different parts of this computer below this video. So you can check it out yourself. This is an AGP port, the little brown one to the left. Then we have um, five PCI ports and two ISA ports. Now the two long black ports to the right are old ports. Older than PCI, all these ports are, are obsolete, but in 1998 they were old. They were there like a, act like a bridge, to act like a bridge between um, this uh, ISA standard and the PCI standard. Because people still had their sound blaster in ISA and maybe they had uh, some modem card or some other expensive um, SCSI card. So they could still use them in this uh, computer together with the PCI, the faster PCI slots and the AGP slots. So it's like a bridge motherboard between two different technologies. I installed a Sound Blaster compatible card and um, a network card. And also we will install a parallel port and a serial port card to provide true parallel serial port for this computer. Now I do this because I know that in the someday I will need it. Uh, when I'm using a cranky old uh, EEPROM programmer or any other kind of uh, cranky old device, it's good to have this old computer rig uh, with real ports to use. And connect the power to the motherboard to provide the different power levels for the motherboard's different components. And we have the Molexes and all this junk here for the CD-ROM, hard drive and floppy disk. Okay, so let's mount the CD-ROM in the chassis. You just push it in from the front. Very easy. And this is the floppy drive. Same procedure. Push it in place from the front. This 1.44 megabyte beast. And this is a cool little gadget that lets you dock your hard drive from the outside without... Ah, I can remove the hard drive without opening the chassis and I can just slide in another hard drive if I want. So it was a pretty cool thing. Came with those silly little keys that were the same no matter what kind of um, device you had. And you just uh, attach them using two screws in each uh, side of the device. This is an IDE cable. You can connect two devices per channel. You have one master channel and one slave channel on the motherboard. And uh, if we connect this cable to the motherboard, we can then connect the CD-ROM and uh, hard drive to the corresponding channel. I will put the hard drive on master and CD-ROM on slave 
and as you can see it's now connected to the CD-ROM and looking at the hard drive you can see some jumper settings here by removing the jumper we get a single device in the chain or we can select slave or master depending on what we want to do with it just turn it around here and we can see the little white jumper here and we just do our choices here and everything will be fine and the computer is still sleeping resting it looks pretty nice and we can see that most is in place the graphics card audio card network card and the IO card RAM CPU now there's a problem with the um, AGP port the problem is that sometimes the cards in the AGP port wiggle loose meaning that the back of the card will come loose pop up and maybe short circuit or something scary like that so we have to fix that and there is a small white plastic thing here to the right that is intended to sort of make a quick fix for this problem and you have a hole in the bottom of the graphics card so you just put something there and anchor it to the white thing there easy and uh, it's worth to do now it's secure and uh, all the precious uh, color in the graphics card will not uh, you know pour out of the back of the card if it's not horizontally in correct position so we can be safe and assured that all the graphics will be left and kept inside This is my old trusty Keytronic keyboard. I just tried it out and I realized that it's still amazing and I kind of want to use it and I kind of loved it. I used to write so much code on this one and it's still, it's actually better than the one I have. So maybe PS2 to USB or something like that. We see. And this is your standard Microsoft ergonomic mouse with a scrolly thing in the center there okay so let's see if we get an explosion or um, a working computer hmm well the power led is working and the hard drive is uh, spinning and uh, the screen is actually showing something it's the BIOS counting the RAM so it everything looks fine in the next episode we will install the operating system Windows 98 games and software and uh, thank you for watching.